valuable one hour uh, uh, for listening into this uh, webinar. So thank you so much. With that, I just wanted to just start with the fact saying I hope all of you are staying safe and healthy. And uh, I know this is a really a tough situations for uh, tough situation everyone. And I hope uh, all your family uh, is doing great. Thank you. Okay, with that, uh, let me quickly jump into the agenda for today. So uh, what I will do is uh, I will talk about AI's uh, relevance in today's world and uh, share a few stories because we engage with a lot of customers and also a lot of uh, corporates in implementing some of their AI strategies. So I will talk about the relevance of AI in today's world and how do you really accelerate uh, the AI journey. And then I will talk about uh, the Intel piece of it. Intel, we have, of course, all of you know, Intel for the hardware. We also have a, a bunch of software that go along with uh, the hardware that helps you accelerate your AI deployments. And uh, I will just summarize with a call to action. Okay, jumping straight into um, into the uh, different segments that AI is uh, playing a role today, you would essentially see every every single bit of it. Right? If you see here, you would see every single industry from agriculture to energy to education to health to media to retail to anything that you name uh, is here. So AI is here. It, it is just revolutionizing every single industry out there. I just wanted to share a small experience uh, with with all of you, especially uh, in two of these sectors, uh, a small story with uh, which is happening in the uh, health and the retail sector, which is very, very close to my heart. This was uh, uh, this was in uh, September of uh, this was in September of 20, uh, 2019 when uh, this radiologist named Rizwan Malik. Uh, he is one of the uh, very famous radiologists in the Royal Bolton Hospital in UK, and he was fed up of uh, seeing all the uh, all these queues, patients waiting in queues to just uh, look at their X-rays, and then the doctor just looks at the X-ray and then gives feedback on what this X-ray is all about and whether it is okay, not okay, and all that. So he was also a great fan of AI, and he said we should do something about it. So then what he did was he he worked with a company in uh, in mumbai uh, which is called uh, cure.ai and tried to implement a solution for reading the chest x-ray images the digital images and then trying to decipher whether there is any problem with these chest x-ray or not and i'm sure the same thing can be extended to multiple uh, different uh, seg segments within just the body, right? Whether it is uh, the tumors, whether it is any other uh, X-rays that we just see and uh, try to decipher what information is that the X-ray is trying to give. So now uh, they started with the implementation, and uh, of course they did get to the point of a trial in January, and then the whole COVID crisis started. Quickly, what they did was this company, Cure.ai, and I know many of you would have listened to our Honorable Prime Minister's speech yesterday. A lot of the solutions to big problems are born in India. And uh, this company, again, uh, Cure.ai, was very smart to repurpose this to read the chest X-rays for COVID patients. And uh, these, this X-ray just tells that, hey, nine, meaning 95% of the, of the times, it was accurate. So this essentially saved a lot of time. And if, if there is any ambiguity, that's when it would essentially go to a doctor, right? So this is the extent to which AI is helping. Just imagine the trauma that the world is going through with COVID. And imagine the number of x-rays that a radiologist have to go through today if they were to just do it every for every single patient. So that is the extent with which AI is affecting the health sector. And uh, I have worked with many customers with respect to tumors and lung segmentations and a lot of other things where they have AI models deployed and that is pretty much doing half of the doctor's job. Right? And especially you can't play with human life. So of course there is always a second opinion if there is a doubt and then the final 
jury is out right so this eases a lot of uh, especially in a country like india some of these solutions are really really very very powerful and the other example that's very close to my heart was uh, this is about uh, uh, this is about a, a, a shopping and of course a uh, lot of us have a uh, a uh, lot of us have our favorite uh, malls that we visit and favorite uh, clothing stores that we go into so this is one of the cases where i just walked into one of the famous uh, retail stores in bangalore and uh, as i just enter and i just walk into one of these uh, one of these areas where the uh, jeans and t-shirts were kept i just got an sms saying hey uh, here you go there is a discount on these these these, these products and uh, Uh, and also there are other offers like uh, maybe on other items that you may potentially buy i was really surprised and curious to know how as soon as i enter i get this sms i was very curious what happened how did they really know so they have a camera that they just uh, that captures my image as soon as i enter and they have a database of their customers and it captures the images tries to map it with your phone number and again it tries to map to what you have bought previously and then it gives a recommendation and there is an ai algorithm that recommends that hey this customer bought xyz items last time and this time he may potentially buy these things right so that is the extent to which ai is acting in uh, or acting on us in our day to day life so in summary what i want you want to leave you with in this file is that without you knowing or not knowing you are already using ai and analytics in every piece of uh, most of the things that that you do in life today okay so with that let me just move on to the next file so this is of course uh, a lot of i i see that uh, there are a lot of students out here who can teach more than what probably i know and of course there are professors whom i need to learn a lot from so i'm not here to explain each of these in in real detail but just for those who are new to ai so ai is nothing but uh, uh, i just uh, go back to this uh, i don't know how many of you watch cartoons and i have two little kids at home and their their favorite cartoon is uh, this doraemon right so that's one of their favorites and uh, whenever i watch that there is one specific episode that comes to my mind where this doraemon is able to predict hey exactly there will be an accident that is going to happen in this particular junction right in another one hour or 15 minutes so we have to be there so and it has promised somebody that hey i will take you there right so uh, to me that is ai the machine is essentially able to predict what is going to happen in the future and uh, this is through a lot of uh, algorithms that the machine will learn through the process and uh, able to predict how the future is going to be so that is artificial intelligence in summary and uh, of course i'm sure many of you have different experiences of ai in terms of Uh, you will have all these science fiction movies which basically have been portraying ai in different ways different forms and different shapes over the last several years and i'm sure you can closely relate to it uh, when when it comes to uh, artificial intelligence and there are two sectors within uh, or two divisions within ai where uh, the first division is uh, machine learning so uh, machine learning is all about of course the uh, it is all about Uh, having some set of data and able to do some predictive uh, 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 with some set of specific set of data and applying those specific uh, using those data and applying some specific algorithms like the ones which is mentioned here regression classification clustering and all these things you are able to predict the outcome for ex- we will talk about some of the examples uh, in the next foil and uh, you probably will have a better idea when i when i talk about those examples and deep learning is still a subset within machine learning which is applied primarily to uh, image processing speech processing natural language processing and uh, of course the uh, the example that i gave about the retail store is a classic example of image processing it it gets the feed from the camera and it's able to process the image and then try to map your phone number and with that it tries to map what you have bought Uh, the last time and is able to give give you recommendations right so so these are the divisions within ai one is of course machine learning and then deep learning which is a further subset of uh, ai and when it comes to all the different learning mechanisms uh, of course there is supervised learning there is unsupervised learning so supervised learning is nothing but you give a 
data to the system saying, hey, you give an image of a cat and label it as, hey, this is cat, right? So that is supervised learning. You learn from the data that is already labeled and supervised learning is learning from no, un unlabeled data. So you just give a cat and the system learns in its own and then it basically is able to tell that it is a cat. Semi-supervised is a combination of supervised and unsupervised learning and uh, reinforcement learning is more about uh, trial and error, right? So what I want to just say here is that you might have experienced so many different scenarios in today's world and different use cases and there is no one size fits all, whether it is the type of learning that you would use to solve a problem or even when it comes to within AI, whether you use machine learning or deep learning, it completely depends on the specific use case that you have. So depending on the use case, you apply the right algorithm, you apply whether to use machine learning, deep learning, or what kind of learning would you use, and then you move forward. Right? So that's what uh, I just want to leave you with in this foil. <clears throat> Okay, so now uh, there are, as we, we just spoke about many, many uh, segments, right? Machine learning, deep learning, and just plain analytics. So when to use what? So in this context of COVID that we are in, so let's assume that there is a big factory who used to just manufacture all these t-shirts and a lot of apparels, clothing and apparels. So now they convert themselves into making masks and all these things. So if the question that they have is just, hey, how many parts or how many such masks should we manufacture in this one week? So all that they have to do is, they have some historical data. And of course with COVID history is no more relevant. And they have data from the government in terms of the number of cases and all those different aspects of COVID, which they can use and build in some analytics to into it and then figure out, hey, okay, on a weekly basis, this is what I'm going to need. Probably if the number of cases are going to increase on a weekly basis, hey, this week I will need so much and the next week I will need probably a, high, a 2X the number, right? So based on all these predictions, they just manufacture based on just using analytics. So now the next question is, hey, what will our production yield be? So what does that mean? When I mean yield, of course I, ma I manufacture 100 masks in a day. So how many of them would be defect free? So how would, uh, let's say, uh, can 90 be the one which is which is like a defect free and no no issues with the mask? So how will we really learn that? Because now with respect to yield, there are many aspects that really affect the yield. It would be hi. Uh, was there a question? Okay. Uh, can you all are you all with me? And can you hear me? Okay. Dr. Umesh? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Sure, thanks. Okay, so now uh, the yield depends on multiple different factors, right? It could be the quality of the cloth, it could be the machine, it could be the person who is involved in making it. So in these cases, we collect all these aspects that really affect the yield. And then we apply these algorithms like regression, classification, all of those that we saw in the previous foil and then come up with a prediction saying, hey, these are the aspects that really affect, affect the yield and this is how uh, our yield is going to be for now and then also for the future. So that's when you will apply machine learning. So now, the next part is, hey, visual defects. Uh, let's say if there are masks with, specific, with small, small holes, right? We need to be able to detect that. So the manufacturing line needs to have cameras. So the camera is going to detect every single defect and that is where you will need deep learning where you apply where you use neural networks with multiple layers and different uh, you know algorithms and all of these and then that is when you will be able to uh, use deep learning in a much much better fashion and of course the same can be if you apply it to a different uh, use cases we can also uh, like uh, alexa is a great example of using audio to an, an AI together, right? So we have many such examples that we can talk about. And can my robotic arm learn to get better? So let's say we replace humans with robots. So how can they learn better? So now it's going to be a combination of all these things, programming the robot to make sure that they use deep learning, machine learning, and make sure they're able to 
get the best output and they how can they learn and of course they will eventually use deep learning and then they will adapt and uh, learn and then uh, try to apply that when i uh, this is a, i was actually when i was visiting uh, the toyota factory near bangalore they were using robots to actually fit the glass in front of the uh, in front of the uh, the the the, the, uh, in the in the car right the front panel right so there they have these uh, robots that are just fixing the uh, glasses uh, the window the the pane the front pane and uh, the question was hey you know how can they were asking me how can they use ai to make it better so so the when 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 the robo is is not able to fix it in a in a correct manner then it has to be able to learn from those mistakes and then able to apply it better and so we had given some recommendations to the the factory here and they try, they were trying to get that implemented into the uh, into their manufacturing right so so these are uh, these are great examples of uh, when to use what right should we use machine learning should we use deep learning and uh, is there work that can be replaced by robots so all of these things is completely dependent on the uh, problem that you have or not okay now accelerate your ai journey with intel so now uh, when it comes to the ai journey so i there are these four phases right one is discovery so what is discovery now this when you when it, when we go back to the uh, the example of the chest x ray uh, reading the the ai uh, using ai to read the chest x rays so discovery so discovery is nothing but hey is this problem statement good enough for ai do will i get enough return on investment if i'm going to invest in ai for this particular problem so chest x ray i think uh, or reading x rays it's a classic problem the whole health industry that is the first point that they start with so that is discovery right and you may have n n number of such problems and uh, the first aspect is to hey really define and identify that problem the next is data so now for the ai algorithms to learn you need enough data without data there is nothing that's going to work so you need enough x ray images to say hey this is a this particular image corresponds to covid and this particular image does not correspond to covid once you have enough data it would just learn so we need some labeled data and also eventually with some unlabeled data as well it will learn and it will be able to predict better and this algorithm with the data that we, that was provided the model it was accurate to 95% as i really said so then the next step is to develop a model uh, ai model using the data that you have created and then with that model you basically deploy it at the edge so let's say the radiologist when the moment uh, the x ray is taken from the machine the digital output uh, is fed directly into the into the ai system and it says hey with 95% accuracy i can say this is a covid case right that's it so without any human intervention you are even able to confirm covid just with that x ray okay so that is what is deploy the deployment is all about so you have a machine with the with the uh, when the radiologist sitting in front of the machine and then he's saying he gets the data uh, the output would be yes or no right covid or not no, no, not a covid right so and then he can reconfirm if uh, uh, to make sure they take next next steps so now so what does uh, the role now i'm coming to the role of intel here so the first and foremost uh, uh, the key and the most important aspect is an ecosystem that has to be available for you to really understand and uh, uh, and discuss with saying hey is this a relevant problem that i'm dealing with is it applicable to ai or there are enough solutions that is already available in the market or uh, are there cloud based solutions or are there are optimized configurations that are already there so you need to know you already have the answers through the ai builders program and uh, every single cloud service provider like amazon meaning aws baidu google azure so all of them are already uh, you know our our partners and they have uh, uh, they have already solutions in place which basically you can deploy deploy directly and of course there are number of isvs or the software vendors who have built their solutions on top of ai and the ai builders is a fantastic opportunity for you to collaborate find those solutions and also deploy it for your own scenarios right so this is the ecosystem that we are talking about now when it comes to software 
uh, most of you know Intel as a hardware company. And of course, for all you know, uh, there is nowadays, there is no hardware without software, right? Uh, uh, today, uh, our team, we are part of the software team within Intel. And whenever uh, there is someone who is going to sell hardware, they basically take us along because they, they, we need to really understand as Intel, hey, what is the software that you're running it, running on these machines and what can basically give you the best performance with all the, all the optimal configurations, right? So for this, we have a bunch of software when it comes to data analytics, uh, when it comes to the machine learning, and then when it comes to deep learning. And uh, I will talk about this uh, in a very detailed fashion in the next couple of files. So the next is, of course, our bread and butter. We do sell hardware. And uh, most of you know Intel for the processors that we, that, that we have. But uh, uh, you probably have heard of these CPUs like the Core i7, i5, i3, and all of these. And we have on the enterprise side, we have uh, the Xeons. And uh, of course, X, this XE stands for our own GPUs that are coming very soon. And uh, the Movidius that you see here is the uh, vision processing unit. And uh, this is one of uh, the, the Havana is the company that we acquired uh, very recently, right? So we have all these different hardware. I will spend some additional time on this in the next set of files and not just the processor, right? So we also have solutions from storage. So we have this Optane DC, which is a, spe spe uh, which is a specific technology for storage, which uses uh, 3D NAND. And uh, of course, this is used for a huge storage, whether it is in the data center, whether it is in the cloud solutions, uh, all of this are being used. And then next, not just uh, the storage and the processors, we also play a role in the Ethernet controllers, right? And we have acquired a few companies uh, in the past, uh, one of which is Barefoot, where we define the connectivity solutions as well, so that you can move data back and forth between your data center and the cloud or wherever the data resides in the world. Right, so that's that's the whole idea. So with this, let me just uh, move a little bit more into the into the details of the hardware specifically, and then uh, I will uh, I will talk about the software. So I did talk about the storage piece of it, uh, the Intel Optane memory for all. Uh, of course, if you want more details, you can always Google for Intel Optane memory. So this is a very uh, unique uh, technology that Intel has uh, invented recently in the last two years, one, one or two, two last two years, where you can use the storage as a RAM as well as an uh, additional uh, additional hard drive, right? So for all you know, you should uh, just uh, Google for Optane and you will get more details. And uh, of course, Mo, uh, the simple summary is that we have technologies for the for moving the data, which means the Ethernet that you use today. Uh, of course, the controllers and a lot of those things, of course, come from Intel, right? And uh, other than that, now, of course, coming to the core, uh, uh, of Intel, the hardware that is the CPUs. Uh, historically, you have known Intel for the CPUs. So all these CPUs that are probably sitting on your laptops, desktops, it is most likely that it would be an Intel. And also a bunch of the servers that are sitting in your data center would most likely be on the uh, on, on Intel architecture, right? And uh, in addition to that, now we have uh, a GPU, which is in the works, which you expect to launch anytime late this year and also more powerful GPUs expected uh, in the next next year. So we already have this in the roadmap and this is primarily primarily targeted for AI, HPC and media workloads. And of course, uh, uh, of course on the gaming uh, side of it, more for the client, but from an enterprise and cloud standpoint, we have these monster GPUs which would uh, attack AI and HPC specifically, right? And other than that, uh, we have FPGAs and also the vision processing units. So vision processing units, this is a small low power chip that can get integrated. The Movidius that you see here, it can get integrated into the cameras and it can do a lot of vision processing and uh, the CPUs can offload the vision processing to this unit so that uh, the vision processing can be much, much faster. Now, the question boils down to why do we need so many different hardware? Uh, and maybe I just want uh, some responses in the chat window uh, if you uh, want to type in. I just want to hear from you, why do we need so many different CPUs? And uh, Professor Yumesh, uh, if, uh, maybe if you can just uh, read out a few responses, that would just be uh, fantastic. Okay. 
Can you hear me all? Yeah, waiting for the responses from the participants. The question sure. is loud and clear. All right. So I'll just give like 20 seconds more. Okay. So just reiterating the question, different hardwares are available. So why there is a need for all these different kind of hardwares? Yes. So there's so a response what? from uh, Jitesh and mm -hmm. uh, he says different solutions to different problems. You need different okay. hardware. Mm -hmm. Then we have Rishabh, who is saying that uh, to perform different tasks of different uh, uh, difficulty levels, we need uh, different kind of hardware to take on the same, right? So we have a couple of responses from uh, Jitesh and uh, Rishabh. Uh, would sure. like to would like to have a couple of more from 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 the from the students who are looking forward to make careers in AI, right? So uh, <laughs> sure. dedicated to do a particular task, Rishabh is again firing a few more questions. Okay, answer. sure, I think that's good, uh, the Professor. Thank you so much uh, for yeah. that. So I think uh, the, pro mostly uh, the response is uh, absolutely uh, to the point, right? So today the workloads that we have are so, so varying in nature, whether it is uh, Twitter and the feeds or whether it is Facebook, or whether it is the cloud solutions, each of these demand and the AI workloads, even just the AI workloads demand multiple, and uh, the architectures are different, the workloads are different, and uh, just the CPU alone does not meet this need. Even just if you just talk, talk about the example that I spoke about uh, image processing in the retail store, uh, the CPUs can do the job, of course, right? And can it do it to the best? No, that is where we need the vision processing unit. That's the Movidius, which can basically do it much, much faster, right? Because the execution units within the vision processing unit are more friendly just to process those images. So when there is something that is that can just process in like a, a second or a fraction of a second, maybe the CPU may take maybe two minutes for that, right? You never know. And of course, there are workloads where the CPU is fantastic at where the vision processing unit cannot do its job. Right, so that is why we need a combination of these GPUs, and you see that Intel is very well positioned because we have all these different products that can suit a variety of needs, from FPGAs to the vision processing units. There are multiple GPUs to CPUs. Right, uh, we have a stack full of uh, hardware that can just suit to any kind of hardware, any kind of workload that that you have, and of course, GPU is surely one of the missing piece. But for all, uh, for all you know. Any laptop that you may have, it already has a Intel integrated graphics. All that we are trying to do is just enter into the discrete card and the discrete uh, uh, GPU market, and that's what will hit the market uh, very soon, right? So that is what uh, the, the GPU story is all about. Okay, so now I think uh, we have good uh, understanding of hardware. So my next question to folks would be, okay, I also did mention this about uh, software. So uh, for those who have already used Intel software, maybe I just want a few responses in the chat window saying, hey, what are the software that you have used? What is that one software that you have used from Intel? And what did you use it for, right? If you can just type it in the chat window, uh, that will set the context for my next foil. Great, so Intel in terms of hardware, we all know. Uh, yes. The question is in terms of the software, which mm -hmm. is all you have used so far and uh, Surely it will set up the tone for the upcoming slides. So sure. We are waiting for the participants to respond. Which all Intel softwares you have used till now, and particularly uh, pertaining to AI and IoT space. In case you have anything to mention, you can just write in the chat, chat box. I will, I, will, I will be happy to read sure. it. Sure. And and of course, I don't want to even limit it to AI and IoT, right? If uh, they have used any software, it is absolutely fine. They can just type it out. That's, yeah, that's perfectly fine. Definitely. Any software from Intel. So we have a response. Uh, okay. Again, uh, it's from it's from Vikas, and he says mm -hmm. uh, Parallel Studio for AI is what he has used. Perfect. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. Okay. Any any other responses? Not so yet. Vikas, Vikas, okay, that's fantastic. So for all uh, for all uh, the, all of you who did not know that Intel already had a lot of software. 
So Parallel Studio and the System Studio are our two software suites, which are essentially uh, targeting the HPC segment and the embedded slash IoT segment. Uh, that's a quick summary of that. And of course, since uh, uh, of course our talk is focused on AI, I also want to talk about some of the AI specific software that we have. So if you look at, uh, of course, machine learning and deep learning, um, we have something called as an analytic zoo, which basically uh, it contains a lot of uh, containers, I would say, with the, all the stack that is needed for the uh, machine learning, for machine learning, right? So all that you do is you just uh, integrate the analytic zoo into your, into your software suite, and then you basically get the pipeline ready. Right? So that is the whole idea of uh, analytic zoo. And of course, uh, other than that, we also have our own distribution of Python. So for AI, many, at least 90% plus of uh, people uh, still use Python. So we have uh, our own distribution of Python, which is derived from the stock Python. And what we have done is we have added optimizations some of the uh, some of the routines like uh, scikit-learn and uh, and uh, the k-means and all of these algorithms have been optimized for intel architecture especially for machine learning uh, you just have a traditional python you just replace it with intel python intel distribution of python you would just uh, the performance would just uh, depending on your algorithm there are there are times we have seen like 4 to 5x performance improvements, right? And other than that, of course, uh, we have uh, multiple software like the data analytics acceleration library and the math kernel library. Uh, so these contains optimized algorithms specifically for machine learning and a lot of the math routines like uh, FFTs, the Fourier, fast Fourier transforms and the BLAS and routines and all of these are part of the math kernel library. And uh, the algorithms that we spoke about classification, regression and all that. So DAL has multiple algorithms already optimized for Intel architecture. So the, uh, the idea is for the idea of educating you with this is if there are, of course, if you know that your deployment uh, is going to be on an Intel hardware, instead of using something that is uh, probably open source, you pick the ones that are available from Intel. It already has a boost in performance and uh, your application is going to perform much better, right? That's the whole idea. Okay, now uh, just moving. So this is primarily from a CPU standpoint. Now, uh, moving on to deep learning. So deep learning, uh, again, models do. Now, uh, what is model zoo is nothing what, it has already a set of pre-trained models for, for example, it could be face detection, it could be a object detection, it could be a classification. So Intel already has a bunch of models optimized for Intel architecture, and it is part of this toolkit called OpenVINO. OpenVINO is one of the best tools that, uh, especially in the IoT space and analytics, and uh, uh, if you are into inference at the edge, this is your tool, right? So OpenVINO stands for Open Visual inference and neural network optimizer. I don't expect you to remember the name. All that you need to remember is OpenVINO. You can always Google and uh, you have a YouTube channel for OpenVINO and you have a bunch of videos right from basic to the advanced uh, topics and you can always uh, learn more from uh, on OpenVINO from the, two, from the uh, OpenVINO YouTube channels. And of course, uh, moving deeper. Um, so let's say, so okay, uh, just a quick uh, summary on how OpenVINO works. Let's say you have a TensorFlow or a PyTorch or a CAFE model. All that you do is you feed that into OpenVINO and it will generate an intermediate model, which basically will run on CPU, GPU, FPGA, or any other hardware, right? It optimizes the model to the specific hardware. You don't have to do anything. All that you do is you just feed in your base model from any of these created from te TensorFlow or PyTorch, and then it creates an intermediate representation that runs on any of these hardware with best performance, right? So that is the whole idea of OpenVINO. And now, in addition to that, we also have all of these frameworks that you see, the TensorFlow, PyTorch, and all these things, all of these things, we have our own optimized versions of TensorFlow. So we have a Intel optimized version of TensorFlow, Intel optimized version of PyTorch, and all of this, right? So all that you do is, if you want to run inference or if you want to do training on Intel, all that you do is download the Intel's version of TensorFlow and PyTorch. It is just that what we would have done is we would have taken Google's TensorFlow and uh, added optimizations to make sure it runs based on Intel, right? So that is the only thing that we would have done. So, so these are the things that uh, uh, that we do from a deep learning standpoint. So what we do is we just add optimizations to all of these frameworks. And apart from that, we have these different libraries called, uh, of course, ngGraph and uh, 
plate ML and MLSL and DNNL. So these are again different neural networks for deep learning. Uh, sorry, uh, different libraries for um, the uh, deep learning. So all that you do is if you are using uh, a deep learning, uh, if you're building your own deep learning algorithm, all that you do is you just include the DNL, uh, the DNNL functions and your, your uh, application is already optimized, right? So that is the simple uh, idea of introducing some of these uh, tools. And of course, apart from that, we do have uh, management tools, which basically uh, from containers to the reference stack, the data analytics reference stack that I spoke about, one is analytics zoo, and there are many other reference stacks like that, even for deep learning and the data analytics, right? So this is what we have from Intel software standpoint, other than uh, the Parallel Studio that Vikas had said, uh, thank you Vikas for that. I'm, I'm glad that you knew about Parallel Studio. We also have a bunch of these software uh, from an artificial intelligence standpoint. The whole idea for you is you have a set of hardware and you want to make sure that you extract the best juice out of the hardware. And what helps you do that? It is the software that is there on this foil. Okay, so that is what I want to leave you with in this foil. Okay, moving on, I just had this uh, small video that I just wanted to share before I uh, kind of uh, end the presentation. So uh, I don't know how the audio is going to work out. So uh, just let me know if you're able to see it and hear it okay. I will just, uh, uh, I will just run it for a, a couple or two or three uh, seconds and then you can let me know if you're able to see it without a lag. If not, I will just stop it. Okay, uh, did, you, did, did you hear the audio? Or uh, did you, uh, are you able to see the video and the audio together? There are lags in the video, so. There are lags in audio. the video. Okay, stop video. Okay, let, let me, I meaning it's a small video. Let's try it out and see how it, uh, how it goes. Of course, there is also some buffering happening in parallel. So let me just run this. Okay, so how, how was it? Was there a lot of lag or uh, was it okay? I think uh, there were lags and uh, we were not able to hear the audio. Uh, oh, is it? Oh, I see. Yeah, oh. but, the, but the idea is here. We'll be sharing uh, the link uh, with the participants offline so they can watch it later. No issues at all. Oh, I see. Sorry about that. Okay, I didn't realize that. Maybe there is, a, is there a share audio or something? Okay, we'll figure that out. Okay, thank you. So that, anyway, I have the link. Uh, I will also put it on the chat box to that for you folks to really go and watch it out as well. So uh, so this is my last slide and uh, call for action and summary. So, uh, so just wanted to leave you all with this message, right? AI is here to revolutionize the way we live, adapt and embrace it. Whether it is uh, the swiggy that you order your food on or whether it is your big basket, 
all of them use AI and related technologies, right? So, uh, of course, uh, <laughs> so if I, if I go back to my uh, engineering days, I conveniently ignored the subject on AI and neural networks because it was an optional subject for me. Today, I don't think it's optional for any of us, right? Uh, because it's just, uh, and of course, it is coming to coming back to bite me. But of course, uh, from a technology standpoint, it's become so convenient and uh, it is here to stay, right? So that's something that I just want to leave you all with. And uh, of course, Intel has the best in class hardware, software and ecosystem to win on AI. And uh, we did speak about that in terms of the Xeons, the powerful Xeons to the new storage technologies to the, uh, uh, the Ethernet technologies and uh, different types of hardware from GPUs to FPGAs to vision processing units. So we have the world-class hardware, world-class software that goes along with it to make sure you get the best use of the hardware. And of course, um, make use of the software that we just spoke about, the optimized tools, the frameworks and libraries for faster solutioning. Because a lot of times what we see is that uh, a lot of our customers end up reinventing the wheel where we would have solved majority of the problems. So look for things that are already available, especially when it comes to AI. Uh, please make sure that you look for things that are already available, uh, not just Intel, meaning uh, whether it is uh, your cloud solution providers or any of these big, big players like Microsoft, Intel, any of them. They already have so many different solutions that are ready-madely available. So make sure you use some of these and uh, build your solutions much faster, right? And especially for students uh, who are probably taking up some of these course newly. Of course, the AI is not something that you can ignore. Please do, uh, uh, please do focus and uh, of course make the best use of it. And I did see that uh, your university also offers a special course on a uh, special B, on, B in computer science for AI and machine learning. So I'm, I'm very happy to see that because that's going to be uh, the future. And of course, it's going to drive the future, right? So with that, I just wanted to leave you all with a message that hardware, software, and ecosystem is, uh, is going to give you the best value. And uh, we are here to help you out on that. So thank you so much. And I hope uh, this was useful. Thanks, Lakshmi. Thanks for the wonderful presentation. And uh, uh, would quickly request uh, Dr. Robiruchi Pasi uh, to give a presentation on uh, uh, the features of the course that uh, we are going to launch in 2020. That is BTEC in Electronics and Communication Engineering with specialization in AI and IoT that we are going to offer in association with Intel uh, with the help of our uh, partner, FICE. And, uh, over to you, Dr. Abiruchi, can you please share the screen? Uh, and, uh, Umesh, uh, uh, Umesh, uh, this is Sanjay Shadvastar. Sir. Uh, I have another commitment at 12.10 on another webinar and where I have to do some, some uh, homework also. So uh -huh. I require seven, eight minutes for that. And uh, permit me to convey my heartfelt thanks to uh, Lakshmi Narsimhanji for giving such a exhaustive presentation. And after many, many days i would say that i have i heard somebody who is making a lot of difference in his point of view and it was a fantastic presentation but formally i shall be requesting our dean engineering dr rai to propose vote of thanks at the end of the whole thing on my behalf sure absolutely thanks a lot sir for your presence in this particular meeting and uh... What do you, Dr. Abiruchi, can you please share the screen? Okay. And, thank uh, you. I take permission, Umesh and Lakshmi, sure, from both of you. Thank you. Sure. Thanks a lot. Dr. Thank, you. thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thanks a lot for being there. Dr. Abiruchi, uh, can you please share uh, the screen? Yes, sir. Sir, actually, uh, I have been disabled. Uh, is it possible for you to share the screen? Okay, I will do that. No issues. Hello everyone, a very good afternoon to all of you. This is Dr. Abhiruchi Pasi and I'll be talking about the newly launched course at Manav Rachna, which is BTEC in Electronics and Communication Engineering, 
with specialization in artificial intelligence and internet of things in collaboration with intel uh, umesh sir i hope i'm audible yeah, absolutely you are audible please go ahead uh, uh, can you please uh, change the slide So, uh, talking about the program uh, outline, as I've already said, this is the BTEC program in Electronics and Communication Engineering with specialization in AI. The students will be given a three uh, three sixty degree Raviruchi, are you there? Okay, maybe there's some sort of a glitch. Okay, I'll take it on. So this program that we are launching in 2020 is revolving around AI and IoT. Uh, we all have sensed that uh, these are the two emerging technologies. These are the technologies which are driving the modern day world. And uh, in the near future, we need experts. We need uh, engineers who are trained in these particular domains and those who are ready to take on the industry challenges right so with the help of uh, intel and fice we have curated the curriculum in such a way that in uh, this particular journey of uh, your bachelors you will be getting exposure to all these technologies and especially uh, the intel state of art laboratory is established at manavrasna which is branded as intel intelligent systems lab this particular laboratory has uh, all the modern infrastructure from intel in terms of both software as well as hardware which is good enough to train you in terms of ai and iot right so uh, going forward with the presentation uh, these are the highlights of the program uh, the curriculum has been designed as per the industrial standards um, there are courses related to ai and iot which are nicely mapped right from semester 1 to semester 8 uh students will get uh, get lab access of intel intelligent systems laboratory uh, which has all the latest software and hardware technologies from intel uh there's an opportunity for earning the skill certificate uh, every semester you will be uh, having end semester examination and at the same time there will be an online examination which will be conducted uh, by fice on behalf of intel and uh, if you clear that particular exam you will be certified on that particular skill so adding on to your degree you will have an opportunity to earn the skill certificates uh going forward a mentorship opportunity uh, with the help of uh, intel experts will always be there uh, for the students project based learning is something which we are uh, promoting so special emphasis to projects is given every semester whatever subjects you are going to take up uh, we have uh, taken care of the fact that there is a project angle associated to it uh, though the entire learning is based on project based learning right so so right from the start you will be encouraged to take up the projects in the form of a team or maybe alone or uh, whatever you feel is good to help you out and then incubation support is already there with manu rashna we are closely tied up with all the uh, government agencies uh, dst uh, meit and all so in case students have uh, the requirement of uh, support for incubation we have a dedicated incubation cell which provides support for incubation there is a 24/7 online support which is available for the students through the lms so they get access to the free online content uh, through that particular lms software uh, research projects it gives you an opportunity to work on the live projects in association with the intel experts wherever there are challenging problem statements what they are trying to solve you also will get an opportunity to get your hands on the same right apart from that uh, as uh, mr lakshmi has already mentioned the intel has a diverse portfolio in terms of ai and uh, especially in terms of the software they have covered a lot of good grounds uh, intel parallel studio uh, python distribution for intel open vino and uh, neural compute stick all are the disruptions in the ai market right so you will be surely exposed to all these technologies in the intel intelligent systems laboratory at manurashna uh parallel studio is a software uh, which which we will be training you on and uh, the support c c++ fortran and python and at the same time uh, allows you to uh, build your codes faster and simplify the coding process for you 
hardware technology uh, right from semester 1 to semester 8 uh, different hardwares will be covered which includes uh, all the popular platforms in open source category as well as the intel specific hardware platforms uh, raspberry pi arduino neural compute stick and all will be covered uh, during this particular 8 semester course at manorashna when you talk about the specialization subjects i mean this is something which is very critical every semester is going to have a particular subject which is going to be focusing on the programming skills or maybe uh, directly relating to the iot or ai space right so when you see this particular uh, slide it gives you a break up that in a all eight semester which all subjects will you will be uh, going through there is a computer programming right in the first semester then you will be exposed to iot uh, it's design using arduino and uh, there will be a lab component which is associated with it third semester we are going to take on python and raspberry pi then we have ai uh, machine learning then deep learning is there and then at the end you have hpc along with its lab high performance computing which is quite important uh, when it comes to the parallel computing and then in eighth semester there will be a full fledged six months internship that students will have the opportunity to take uh, in association with any industry so this is how the entire uh, scheme has been laid down so in all the eight semesters apart from your core subjects you will be surely uh, uh, going to have an exposure on all these subjects admission process it's very much available on manorashna.edu.in you have to go through a small entrance test which we call as manorashna national aptitude test mrnet is already under process so you get more information about mrnet and its dates through manorashna.edu.in uh, all are requested those who are uh, admission seekers for this particular course to log on to manorashna.edu.n to have more information about uh, mrnet and the detailed process for uh, this particular program uh, in case you have any specific queries you can always reach out to us uh, the departmental contact is also mentioned on this particular slide and uh, to all the interested participants those who have attended the session today we will be sharing this particular slide with you and uh, you can always go through it and in case you have any query related to the admission process and especially uh, in terms of uh, any queries whatsoever you have in terms of this course structure and all you can always ask us right so this is in brief about what we wanted to discuss about this particular course and now uh, uh, the house is open for all the questions that you may have related to this program related to the presentation which uh, mr lakshmi has already presented very nicely in terms of ai portfolio so over to you guys in terms of any questions whatsoever you have related to today's session this is an opportunity for all of you to share your doubts um, and ask questions to the experts directly we will be happy to answer all your queries so over to the participants uh, for the questions jitesh uh, you have raised the hands So I will yes, unmute sir. you so that you can ask uh, the question. Okay, sir. My base. The very first question is: Is the internship, as you said, is it promised from Intel? Uh, not Or at all. Uh, not at all. I mean, this internship is a six months internship program, which uh, is there in the eighth semester, and uh, students have the option uh, to look out for the industries. We have a special cell in place at Manav Rashna uh, Corporate Resource. uh sell crc which takes care of all these internships so they will be helping you map with the right industry who is working in ai and iot space not particularly intel uh, absolutely there are various uh, players in the market who are working and uh, uh, dealing in ai and iot space so you will have opportunity not just in intel but also in the other organization also whomsoever you feel is good for you and there is always a structured process which is being followed in all these uh, leading industries it's not like uh, the internship is offered to every student they they scrutinize the uh, scrutinize the student as per the skill set that they want so in case you have adequate skills you you are good enough uh, to 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 come up to the expectations of them so there is always a scrutiny process that they follow so you will get a chance to appear for the interviews and uh, not just in intel but also in other organizations also you will have a chance to to go and uh, put up your case and in case uh, you you go through then you are absorbed over there for the internship opportunity for 6 months okay. where you get to learn a lot exactly so sir can you name any of them oh uh, there are a lot many i mean uh, you start naming right from uh, your consumer electronic goods uh, to to the industries from automobile to the uh, to the computers i mean every sector is right now dominated by ai and iot so yeah. we talk about philips samsung uh, 
Motorola, I mean, uh, companies like Intel, uh, Microchip, I mean, all these are the brands which are which are using AI and IoT skills. So, so obviously, you have opportunity to 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 go for internship in any of these companies. ST Microelectronics is another big brand. Uh, so, so yes, obviously, you will get an opportunity to work in any of these industries in case uh, you have skills. Uh, you can make into any organization. So okay, thank you very much, sir. Okay, any other question? Not really. Okay, we have uh, something in chat box from Rishabh. Uh, I have applied for Manav Rashna for this specific course. I have also given the GD. Uh, uh, talking to the counselor, they said I have been selected, but I haven't yet got any mail regarding my selection. So Rishabh, uh, we'll be surely uh, putting up uh, your point across uh, to the admission team, those who are handling the admissions, and surely you will get to hear back from us very, very soon. Any other question? Uh, yes, uh, Jitesh, this side. Okay. Uh, sir, um, I just wanted to know that why can't we know our percentile in that MRNAT score? Uh, you, you just show the rank. Why can't I see uh, our percentile? Okay. Uh, so, Abhiruchi, Jitesh, yeah, sir. Uh, Bita, this is as per policy of Manav Rachna. Uh, like, uh, you will be shown the rank only, the percentage, etc. I mean, the admission cell, only those people are having uh, the exact percentage as well as the bifurcation of marks. So they'll be letting. Hello. Yeah. Uh, sorry, the last few seconds, it was, it was not audible. Can you repeat, ma'am? Yeah, Jitesh, uh, I said that uh, it is as per the policy of Manav Rachna that only the uh, rank is being displayed, right? The percentage and the bifurcation of marks that is uh, with the admission cell. So uh, it is, I mean, they, uh, those people only who will be disclosing it. I mean, it is not no. we as faculty are aware of it. One more right? thing, ma'am. Yeah. Oh, till which rank you can uh, claim that scholarship? But uh, that, that is again, I mean, the admission people are aware of these things. I mean, we as faculty members are not aware. What you can do is whatever queries you have, kindly note down this email ID and you can put in your queries on this particular email ID as far as the scholarship path is concerned. Kindly note down the email ID. Okay, ma'am. Yeah, it is SFC. Oh, wait a second. I shall... Yes, ma'am. SFC. SSC. SF, F as in Faridabad. Oh, SFC. Yeah, SFC at the rate. At the rate. Manavrachna.edu.in. Okay, ma'am. Okay, so anything regarding your uh, marks in the MRNAT as well as how much scholarship will you be getting uh, pertaining to the mm -hmm. rank you have achieved, all these questions will be answered by the admission cell. Okay. Uh -huh. so there is a, another question which we have got from Rishabh Arya on the chat box. And uh, <clears throat> Rishabh, uh, I have noted down your query. And uh, uh, on your this particular query, I would surely speak to the admission cell. And uh, we will be getting back to you in the offline mode. And... Uh, uh, you can expect a call from our side by evening today uh, and we'll resolve this particular issue right and uh, any 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 doubts in terms of the uh, technical aspects that we have discussed today uh, it was a great presentation by uh, lakshmi sir on intel technologies uh, any one of you having any sort of uh, questions for uh, lakshmi sir before i pitch in i have noted down a couple of questions from my uh, okay. My side, surely I will be uh, eager to ask Lakshmi sir and uh, take his opinion on the same. So in case you have any, I mean, uh, would like to give you an opportunity to ask before I uh, disclose my questions uh, to all of you. Sir, one thing. Yeah. Sir, what is the advantage of electronics and communication over computer science engineering? I wanted to know that. Mm -hmm. As everyone knows, AI is the future, but everyone is going for computer science where as a few of us like me are willing to go for electronics. So what okay. is the advantage okay. I wanted to know? So I think uh, it's a million dollar question uh, that you have asked. So I would just like to add so, to that. I had the similar doubt in mind. 
okay so would like to give you uh, my opinion on the same right and uh, don't take it uh, as as opinion on behalf of uh, manav rashna or uh, Uh, you can give a personal advice that will be more absolutely. than helpful for me absolutely so so i'll be speaking on 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 my own behalf so whatever i am going to speak right now is 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 only related to me i'm not speaking on behalf of my organization uh, as mm-hmm. as it's not right for me to favor any particular course uh, when you talk about these two courses i mean both of them are uh, equally uh, challenging equally potential and at the same time provides you an opportunity for great learning experience right at the same time uh, your four years of engineering whatever you do whether you take uh, computer science or electronics or any other field it's all about the experience what you have in the four years of your bachelor's that's going to matter the most uh, your your skills are going to improve throughout the kind of subjects you will be exposed to and the kind of uh, situations you will be exposed to they will make you better in terms of uh, your lifelong learning rather than any particular subject right so as lakshmi sir i traded in his presentation that he didn't study neural networks but now his life is uh, not going to move in into the future without that neural network subject it's, it's right now very important for him uh, to move in his uh, career ahead so at the same time the learning is a lifelong experience right so so surely ece and cs both of them are going to present you uh, great opportunities uh, in terms of building up your skills this course that we have launched uh, is uh, in ai and iot domain so we sensed that there is a need of uh, this kind of a course and this kind of a specialization which gives you a flavor of ai and iot uh, both in your btech and when you come to electronics you have an added advantage what that advantage is that you will be exposed to the hardware right ultimately uh, whatever software you are going to write it has to work on some sort of a hardware so ultimately when you talk about the optimization optimization both in terms of software and hardware levels are important so if you know only one side of 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 the trade uh, the other half is not known to you right but electronics provide you an opportunity to get good hold on both the skills that means hardware as well as software and the course is curated in such a manner that it keeps a right balance of both of them uh, so that you get opportunity for both hardware and software skills then it's a winning combination right so whatever chipsets that are being used today uh, that allows us to do all these zoom calls you are using your laptop ultimately at the back end there is a big hardware unit which is driving everything and on the top of that there is a software which is uh, which is executing the things so with electronics uh, you get an edge you get an edge why because you get to know uh, the insights of the hardware the processors how they work uh, how they are programmed how how the pcb designing uh, fundamentals work and on the top of that there is ai component there is machine learning component there is a programming component which makes you uh, better in terms of your programming skills so uh, when you go to the industry uh, you will have all the assets with you which are required uh, to get absorbed right so you have software skills you have hardware skills and it's a it's an asset for any organization to have right when it comes to the packages i mean industry right now is very much standardized there is nothing like uh, somebody is going to get 20 lakh somebody is going to get 3 lakh or something like that so it all depends upon skills if you have right skills there are right salary packages available in the industry and uh, Uh, you just need to have right opportunity uh, to to set for the interview for those companies clear those uh, initial stages of uh, aptitude and then uh, there is one interview which takes place and you are good to go right so ultimately at the same time uh, i mean there is nothing which is concrete in terms of differentiating in terms of package if i say 5 lakh is for ec 6 uh, lakh is for computer science it doesn't make any sense right so there is nothing like uh, a difference in terms of package we have seen in the past that uh, the graduates from electronics background have started off their career at 14 15 lakh rupees uh, per annum so it has happened in the past similarly for computer science they might have started at 15 16 lakh at the same time on an average yes there is something which industry follows 4 lakh 5 lakh 6 lakh i mean that trend always changes right but at the same time what we feel is like if you have skills if you have uh, Uh, got a good experience good expertise in terms of your uh, uh, skill set and you get uh, uh, a chance to sit for a right right company there's absolutely no chance you can you can you can move out uh, you you surely will make sir will manavrachna help us to get to the right company when you see the stats i mean the stats are very much there on the website of manavrachna and okay. to see what kind of companies come to manavrachna 
uh, what kind of packages they have offered in the past. Obviously, they are they are well known to you guys, and you can always ask the university for the statistics regarding the placement. They will be happy to share the the statistics with you what has happened. And at the same time, you see the alumni base. Uh, we are in the business for the last twenty two years, right? So alumni base of more than uh, thirty five forty thousand students is already there. Those who are uh, who are tagged Manavrasna right now. So, so, so there is absolutely no reason in terms of uh, placements. Manavrasna has a special cell which prepares you for the placements, and at the same time helps you uh, uh, get your dream job, uh, right? So, if I am inviting hundred companies and your dream is to get into a hundred one company, right? So, so if that company is not coming to me, and if you still want to go over there, we will help you out in terms of reaching that company, right? Uh, so, on, on, on chat, there is one, one thing. Uh, which has been mentioned. So, uh, highest package in many universities, ten to twelve lakh. Sir, if I, yeah, please, please. Yeah, so uh, this left me. So, if I were to just add on top of here from a from an industry perspective, I think. Uh, uh, so, what you rightly what you said is uh, absolutely right in terms of the combination of hardware and software. Right, with electronics, you do get an advantage of. Uh, understanding the nitty gritties of the design and all that. So especially uh, in a company like Intel, if you want to be on the design side of things, uh, electronics or electrical degree is uh, preferred. If you if uh, you prefer to be on the software and the programming side of things, uh, of course, a computer science degree is preferred. So uh, with, with this, I think with this unique course that you're mentioning, it probably gives them a flavor of both. So I think that's a good good advantage. So that's, that's my... Uh, my view uh, yeah absolutely point. absolutely right and at the same time uh, in life everybody is important uh, ec guy is important computer science guy is important mechanical guy is equally important so so there is nothing which is left out in, in our society everyone is important what is the most important thing is how you take up your assignment if you take up electronics what you are doing in those four years and how you are managing your everyday activities uh, improving your skills and knowing that fine, if I want to target Intel or Microsoft or maybe companies of that kind of repute, what it takes to be there, right? I mean, all these things are uh, something which are very important, uh, irrespective of uh, uh, which course you take. Surely, um, this course is going to give you an edge over the others because uh, it provides you the flavor of both hardware and software technologies. And when it comes to the packages in, in the universities for EC, it is 5 lakh to 6 lakh per annum. And for CS, it is 10 to 12. It is not there. It is absolutely not there. Uh, uh, you can refer to the sheets which have been shared by uh, by our university. Uh, so that much difference is not always there. Uh, in special cases, uh, there is a difference like that. But it is equally valid for EC as well as a CSE uh, folk, right? So somebody who approaches, uh, let us say, ST, Microelectronics or Intel, they may be uh, hired for a higher salary package as compared to the guys who are being picked up uh, uh, from EC background or CSE background in a company like a TCS or or, or an LND, right? So so those differences will always be there. But at the same time, if if you have right skill set, the the chances of you making into those uh, companies they increase, right? It may take time for you to get into those companies, but at the same time, uh, with the right skills, the chances are always improving, right? So our objective with this course is to give you right opportunities, right kind of course content, right kind of exposure to lab as well as the theory part, right kind of uh, mentorship with the help of Intel experts. And at the same time, uh, you have to take that journey. You have to live it every day, right? For the four years. And there's absolutely no reason that you will be stopped somewhere and somebody can stop you. You can always make up and, 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 and get into your dream job, right? So... Any other question you have related to this EC and CS yes, uh, query? I think we have sorted it out. Uh, we have answered your questions uh, from Intel. Pretty well, sir. Okay, from Intel's perspective, you got to hear from Lakshmi, sir. And he has rightly advised you that in case you want to get into a design side, uh, Intel is going to prefer the guys who are into electrical background or electronics background. And if you want to get into the software side, <clears throat> absolutely uh, i mean guy with 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 more cs background experience will be preferred so so it is like all uh, the streams give you some sort of an opportunity it's all about what path you choose uh, for your career that is the most important thing okay jitesh yes sir thank you very much okay any other question uh, we are already running out of time <clears throat> no sir great uh, Rishabh has a question. AI, how is going to be the future of India uh, versus IoT? So I think I uh, would like to take Lakshmi sir's opinion. Uh, Rish uh, Rishabh has asked a question. 
uh, how is going to be the future of India in terms of AI and IoT? Lakshmi sir, over to you. Um, yeah, hi. hi. Thanks, uh, thanks for that question. So I think uh, when it comes to IoT and AI, uh, if you look at actual production deployments, even across the globe, it is less than, uh, I would say, somewhere in the range of uh, higher single digit, right? The, de the production de AI deployments is still in lower single digit because a lot of, uh, sorry, higher single digit, that would be in the range of eight to nine percent, right? Uh, even some people may say, hey, even that is a slightly higher number. So uh, if you look at the opportunity, it is just plenty. And especially in a country like uh, India, um, this scenario that we are in today, like after the post COVID, I think it is just uh, opening up a lot of opportunities. And especially from a industry 4.0, what, what I feel is that there is a lot of scope for digitization. Right. So when I mean digitization, it could be all these uh, regular factories becoming smart factories, uh, any of these. And, and of course, make in India, all of these initiatives. And if you heard to uh, uh, yesterday's uh, speech from our honorable prime minister, he was talking about uh, how is it that uh, we can make a lot of the things that we buy from outside? How are we going to make it uh, local so that we can promote brand India? Right. So that is going to be a, there's going to be a big push. And we are seeing that in uh, even a lot of the investments that uh, the, 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 the government is making. And uh, I don't know how many of you know this uh, initiative called NSM, right? National Supercomputing Mission, where there are going to be 70 or 60 plus supercomputers that are going to be deployed in the top research institutes in India, right? So there's a big in initiative and uh, huge investments, right? So, and a similar uh, effort is happening on the AI and IoT space as well. And you're right from the state governments, the central governments, a lot of uh, activities around the whole digitalized digitization of the economy is happening. So in terms of opportunities, I think sky is the limit, right? That's what I would just want to summarize. Great, uh, so we have with us, uh... Uh, FICE experts also, and uh, would like to take uh, the opinion of one of the FICE experts on the same. Uh, over to you, FICE team, if you if you would like to just uh, add on to what uh, Lakshmi sir has already uh, elaborated in terms of AI and IoT market in India, uh, would like to have your opinion. Anyone from the FICE team? Uh, hi, Dr. Mesh. Uh, I, I, I go with what Lakshmi spoke. I mean, the market is really good. It's all about uh, how to build the skills by the students and take the advantage and move on. And uh, Manav Rachna having the Intel lab now, I think the students are uh, lucky uh, and they can, uh, they, uh, I, I personally see a good future for the kids if they uh, take the program and go, for, go forward. Great. Thanks a lot for your opinion, sir. Yeah. So, Thank you. The lab is set uh, at Manav Rachna. Uh, it's Intel Intelligent Systems Lab. We have the infrastructure with us in place. The trainings are done. And uh, unfortunately, because of this lockdown, we couldn't get to the job. Uh, but surely in the near future, before we uh, get on to the normal routine, uh, we will be surely conducting a few more online sessions on, on specific topics, specific uh, concepts related to AI and uh, IoT. And uh, you will get the first-hand information regarding the same on all our uh, digital platforms, Facebook, as well as the Manu Rishna website. So uh, keep on uh, watching all these sources for the latest information about this course, about the upcoming webinars and uh, expert talks. Uh, surely you will get to learn a lot before you join us formally at university for your uh, bachelor's program. Uh, now I would request uh, Dr. Rai uh, to, to say a word of thanks and formally end the meeting. Dr. Rai. Dr. Rai, are you there? Okay, Dr. Rai is uh, right now not able to take up uh, the call. So, We'll request our associate dean. She is there with us on the call, uh, Dr. Geeta Nechavan. Uh, she is associate dean for Faculty of Engineering and Technology. So, would request you, ma'am, to to say a formal word of thanks and end the meeting.
Hello, good morning to all. Very good morning, ma'am. I would like to express my gratitude to intern profession professionals for their presence in this webinar. The webinar was really very interesting. Uh, I, we would also like to thank Dr. Umesh Datta for, and uh, Dr. Abhiruchi Pasi for their efforts on making this webinar a success. They wonderfully answered all the queries of the students. I hope all the students are satisfied. In case you have any other query, you can just email Dr. Umesh Datta. He will be ever ready to answer your queries. The next few years will be of AI and machine learning. There is huge scope of these courses. In the end, I would again like to thank all the attendees who made this webinar a great success. Thank you all. Thanks a lot, ma'am, for your encouraging words. Thanks, Lakshmi, sir, for your uh, time and all the efforts you put in for uh, the wonderful presentation. Uh, surely, we have taken a lot away from your presentation and uh, will really help us progress uh, with the Intel technologies uh, related to AI. And uh, formally, would like to thank uh, uh, FICE team for uh, helping us organize this particular session. Uh, Ritesh, sir, uh, unfortunately, he couldn't be here with us. But uh, Lakshmi sir has covered up very well uh, on his behalf and on behalf of uh, team at Intel. Uh, so thanks a lot, guys. Stay safe, stay home, and uh, uh, keep learning uh, and uh, enjoy. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye bye. I formally thank end the so meeting. Much, yeah. thank, thank, you. thank you so much. Thanks, thanks a lot. Bye. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you.